the rap game hates consistency. Now, before I even tell you what, what my take and why I'm saying that is, what do you think I mean by that? And before you answer, can you hand me that drink? Absolutely. Thanks. Um, Thank you. Like, if a rapper has a sort of formulaic sound, you know, produced by the same, the beat's produced by the same producer, you know, no, am I wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. Keep no? going. I'm, I'm just that's listening. what I'm thinking because I'm they constantly have to go through this change. They constantly have to change within the times of the rap game. Mm -hmm. Like, what's hot? What's trending? Let's do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Like you see, like these, like you know, little Uzi Vert. I don't know if he's still relevant. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you like that dude blowing up. Like I don't understand it. Takashi Six Nine. Yeah, he dropped a new album. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what, Almost, almost on the mark for that one. But the angle that I wanted to take, and I, I'm doing this at the risk of sounding like a Drake fanboy. I think Drake is like the Michael Jackson of our time. Got a dad. Are you lying? I swear to God, dude. Yeah, I, love I can Drake. never tell when I you're love fucking Drake. lying. I love Drake, dude. It's, it's, just like, it's just like when you told us Hotline Bling was the best Drake song. It <laughs> is. It is. I still stand by that. I still stand by that. Actually... Yeah. I, I wish you there. could see your own facial expressions when you say <laughs> this shit. Actually, I would have to say that Hotline Bling is tied up there with... Uh, uh, Shut God. the fuck up. I, I don't even want to hear it. Hold up, hold up, hold up, man. It's on his newest release album. It's uh, Kiki, do you love me? In my feelings, dude. Song of the year. My feelings, yeah. <sighs> that is... Really that's the name. The that's the name. Okay. Get out of but, here. But let me let me let me get to get let me get to here. what what I wanted to uh talk about with that though. Um at the risk of sounding like a Drake fanboy, right? Uh I think, you know, Drake's like the Michael Jackson of our time. He's one of the biggest Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> it's just a funny conversation. <laughs> Keep going. He's Keep one going. of the biggest artists uh -huh. out and he has been for how long? Like a fucking decade, right? Since he was with uh Cash Money. Yeah, Young since money. he was with, with Cash Money, but I think it really started when his Take Care album was released. Oh, yeah. The one with Marvin's Room and, yeah. So that got released, and then everything after that popped off. I still remember AJ and I were freshmen in college, and we were going to the Planet Fitness because we both lived in the same area. We were going to the Planet Fitness, and we were listening to, uh, if you're reading this, it's too late. And we both thought that shit was heaters, okay? The whole album. But anyway, I'm getting <laughs> off topic here. I'm not, a, no, I'm, not, no. I'm not a Drake fanboy, but I think he is really good. Anyway, yeah. it, it's sort of the same thing with Logic, right? Like Drake gets shit on for everything. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Like Drake gets shit on for absolutely, he's like, he, he can't rap. He's got a ghostwriter. He's got this, he's got that. He's trash, he's whatever, he's right. But- He's still the biggest artist and he's extremely consistent. Now, let's let's think about let's think about when in comparison to J. Cole, right? J. Cole is a beloved artist, especially in like the rap game. Do you ever hear anybody complaining about fucking J. Cole's doing this, J. Cole's this, J. Cole's that? Or because he's consistent, but he's not at the superstar level that Drake is, in my opinion. That's true. Absolutely, that's true. He writes like his lyrics, what he writes about, completely opposite. Right. You know, Drake obviously talks about, you know, being in your feelings. Yeah. You know, getting heartbroken, being hung up on a girl. Yeah. J. Cole, I mean, KOD, my favorite album of all time. Great album. Amazing. Don't give me that, I AJ. Mean, Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Remember AJ is the sports writer, not the culture <laughs> <Yeah>. writer. <laughs> You're getting out of shot. It's a, it's a beautiful album. I mean. Think about the you, topics you, he touches on. You got to listen to it from beginning to end. But anyway, yeah, keep going on your keep going on your point. Getting you know addicted to love, drugs, mm -hmm. money, anything that can potentially ruin your life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I think that's it was beautiful. But yeah, Drake is coming from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. He's talking more about you know what the people want to hear about. What the people want to hear about. Yeah, but it's good, man. Yeah, like but, I like it. But that's my point. Is that like, I guess the consumers of hip hop rap in that realm, 
they only want you to be so consistent or they only want you to fit within the the avenue that that you that they think you belong right because drake's put out you know he he had like that uk drill style stuff that he was doing when he was with those people working with those people in the uk he's done like hotline bling and those like kind of like caribbean vibe you know what i mean he's done the spanish with uh uh oh uh bad bunny that's right yeah is that a single yeah. yeah so so he's extremely versatile the masses really fuck with drake and because they can't put him in one avenue pissed everybody everybody's pissed and that's why he gets shown. The rap mm. game hates consistency outside of what they know you're good at. Like what? Like you, you, Kendrick's not gonna do a a, a Spanish, you know, a, a collaboration oh. with a Spanish artist. No, but that's like you know what I mean. Yeah, it's to pimp a butterfly. I'm got. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. People hate it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was probably mixed reviews. I wouldn't say a lot of people hate it. I mean, it was critically acclaimed, but like outside of the media like talking about fans and just yeah they didn't they didn't really vibe with it yeah uh, you know he hit it with um damn the yeah album? yeah i mean that was a- and i this just me but i thought it was good i, I wasn't like i thought it was amazing really right here yeah <laughs> <laughs> So I guess this might be a good time to talk about like our perspectives on music as we've talked about many times as somebody who likes the production side of music. Yes. Kendrick doesn't, a lot of his songs don't have that, that flow or that beat that I like, that I like to listen to. You know what I mean? Kendrick's all about the lyricism, which is kind of where you come from, right? You like the lyricism. Yeah. You, you listen to... Yeah, let's make that known right now. Me and Jake talk about music. We talk about it from totally two different perspectives. Right. Which is cool, I think. You don't get a lot. Yeah, kind of contrast. But that's why I didn't think Damn was that good. I mean, there was a couple songs that I really liked, but like yeah. as a, like a critically acclaimed album, or like yeah. to be you know thought of as one of the top albums for hip-hop in the year that it came out or whatever, I, I wouldn't. For me, I wouldn't put it there. Yeah, I mean, that's so funny because I would think you wouldn't like KOD. I thought oh, the, I loved KOD. I thought the production on that was actually very minimal and it was more of his lyricism highlighted. See, but that's how you know an album to me is special to me is when the lyricism is overshadowing what I like the most in the production of the, the music. Uh, okay, yeah. Logic's album did the same thing. I was really interested, intrigued on what he was saying in his album more than the beats. Obviously, the the, the ones that I picked, I love the beats. Soul Food Two, Man I Is, those are great. Yeah, great beats. But I like but, production too. Yeah, we're definitely more. We got uh, more educated on this. Like yeah. you're more educated on production. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I'm trying to get. Yeah. No, I get you. But um, yeah. Well, what about Freddie Gibbs? I wrote that one article about controversy. See, that's that's a art- controversial article. Sorry, that's <laughs> I'll pick you off. <laughs> um, no, uh, that's that's one thing. I think another thing that separates between like lyricism and the music is that I had, I hadn't heard any Freddie Gibbs. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, really? Yeah. So he worked with the Alchemist on his last album. You ever heard of him? Yeah, I've heard of them. But see, that's the thing is like that that goes into my playlist. Freddie Gibbs, The Alchemist, all that stuff doesn't usually make it. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Production wise, I love what um Lil Baby's producers are doing. Um Gunna. I it just, for me it just appeals to yeah. me. You know what I mean? I think mean? if so, we go ahead, sorry. I think if we put you know, we got ten songs that we've heard in this last three months totally different oh absolutely but i love that yeah no that that adds perspective yeah absolutely you know it makes you see both sides of a track yeah that's important um we should do that what? pretty cool what 
oh, article about that. That, that might be an interesting thing to do on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could do that next episode.